Biederman wanted to make an art of the machine that he didn't even physically have to make. And he wanted to do this as early as the late 30s. And he believed that the art of the future would be democratic and available to all at small cost. The individual discrete valuable object was not any, what he valued, even though he ended up making those. Um, well, in Poppy's case, it's interesting because in the 50s um, and in the neo-concrete context, but also the concrete context, there was actually a value placed on multimedia, like the um, Brenda and I both showed pages from the March 22, 1959 edition of the Journal du Brasil that published the manifesto in Poppy's text. And in addition to Poppy's text, there's a text on Ligia Clark's painting. There's a small text on the ballet that Poppy had created. There's a text on neo-concrete um, poetry, on neo-concrete music. So there was a real, they embraced this idea of sort of that concrete, but particularly neo-concrete, like went into every media. Um, the, the, I think that the assertion of the works as paintings comes, it comes in 83 and I think it comes retrospectively of um, recognizing that the secondary status of the medium of printmaking has prevented her work from being understood as part of the important works that were produced under neo-concrete in a, you know, a later moment. And so assert, sort of both opening up more poetic license to interpret the works away from mm -hmm. prints, but also I think responding to the sense that her work is being marginalized because prints are viewed as marginal. But at the moment of their creation, I think there was this real embrace of a multitude of media. That's certainly the case with the Argentines. The Madi Manifesto, for example, lays out um, right in its foundation that there will be um, Madi painting as such and such, drawing, sculpture, music, architecture, dance. What's interesting is that a lot of the definitions are they're, they're kind of wishful thinking. Uh, it wasn't that there was any production that this was based on. So, for example, the, the definition of music says the inscription of sounds into the golden mean, which means nothing, as far as I could tell. But it sounds great, and it, you know, ref it, it, it's aspirational. Um, and then the, the later magazine, Arte Madi Universal, would, would very regularly include um, photographs of dance and architecture, which really had very little or nothing to do with the movement itself, but they were kind of appropriated um, because it was seen as being so important to encompass all of the arts, um, you know, each in their own sort of specific way. So that was definitely there. The other interesting point for me in the origin of these movements, and, and, and it's fairly unusual, is the importance of literature. Um, and a lot of the debates about abstraction and, and even the term concrete actually come out of um, literary discussions. And uh, one of the editors of Arturo magazine was Edgar Bailey, who was a poet. And there's constantly a constant presence of poetry um, throughout the movement. And um, a lot of the, the very specific debates about the nature of art are actually about literature and then somehow get translate, translated across into into the visual arts, which is a very unusual case, and a lot of that gets lost when we're just looking at the paintings. Uh, we don't, we, we can lose that literary origin of them. Um, actually, it, it's a it's a great point that you um, bring up. It's it's to me it's one of actually to me one of my main concerns in studying this field, um, because you find in in you know some of these tendencies a this true desire to undo media specific, medium specificity. And, and that's really a very advanced uh, move on the part of a lot of these artists. In Brazil specifically, you have someone like Ferreira Goulart, this critic that um, both uh, Daniela and uh, Adela mentioned. He wrote in 1959, um, um, a, a, an essay called The Theory of the Non-Object, and it was followed up by another essay called Dialogue uh, of the Non-Object, which was his way of responding to these sort of dialogue, this non-specificity of medium, this move outside painting, move outside sculpture, which, of course, you know, Torre Garcia's reliefs also are introducing already in the 30s. Um, and, and, you know, s someone like Donald Judd in 1965 will do a very, will enact a very s similar move with his essay, a specific objects. So there's a concern with moving away from painting and sculpture into the realm of objects 
the everyday objects that we manipulate, that we interact with. Um, someone like Michelangelo Pistoletto in Italy was talking about the minus objects. So it's really a, you know, a contemporary art concern that starts very early on in Latin America, in some, uh, you know, among some of these artists. Well, and of course, painting was supposedly not even taught at the Bauhaus, it's despite the fact that Kandinsky and Clay were there and were, they were really doing their own work and teaching form. Um, so again, Albus came from his formative years were really not to do with painting, but he realized he needed to be a painter to make a living, basically. He had that, but, but his, he was so involved with materials and the whole Bauhaus idea was involved with materials that there was a complete non-specific specificity it, it came goes right back to the 20s are there any other questions at this point well all right i think that's a site it's been a fantastic day i want to thank all of you who are here i want to I want to especially thank all of the speakers. You all did such a fantastic job bringing alive these artists' ideas, and, and I'm sure we'll have further conversations when we drink wine in the court. And I also want to especially thank Patricia Patty Cisneros for supporting this day. It's been just such a great collaboration working with the Colección, and uh, just thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you.